Heard you snacked a big fish. We'll take it from you. Come on. This way. I am an artist, not a Nazi spy. Hey, Cinemark, Dave Rispoli here, and I am chatting today with the cast and the director of the upcoming drama, The Last Vermeer. So this is unlike any story we've seen involving World War II. What was your reaction when you first read the script? I was surprised. I mean, I, I was very aware that, you know, artworks uh, had been um, acquired by uh, Nazis and various leaders, uh, you know, throughout World War II and other wars, you know, when, when, when uh, areas were taken over and occupied, things were pilfered and stolen left, right and centre. Um, but I didn't know this story. I was astounded that I'd never heard this story before because I'm sort of, you know, a freak about history and art. So to to read this thing and to find out that there was this guy who'd done all this, who'd, who'd done this, I mean, pulled that thing off. And I was astounded when I read it. I was interested because it's because it's happening in the art world. You know, it's it's very about the core of what it was like after the war but in a different environment, you know? So like it, it, you can have like a freer mind about it or a different perspective. So what was it like working with Dan as a director? I, I didn't in any way sort of have the feeling that I was standing in front of a director that was directing anything for the first time. Dan said from the beginning, look, you guys are the experienced ones here. You know, you, you, you know what you're doing. I'm not gonna profess to sort of try and tell you what to do. And he was listening to everything that was going on. He was very sort of, humble, he was very, I mean, taking everything in, you know, processing it, and then you'd also get a straight answer. And, 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 and if you came up with an idea that he thought was not right for it, then he would just say, thank you very much for saying that, but I, I think we're gonna go in this direction. So I felt really in really good hands. He was the captain of his yeah. ship in every sense. And that felt so good, you know, to, re to be on a ship where there was an actual captain. I'm Captain Joseph Piller of the Allied Provisional Government. During the war, what did you do? Tried to survive, like everybody else. Everyone likes Han. He's the life of the party. What Germans attended his party? I never said they did. You went to one of his parties. I went to a lot of parties, Joe. And you left. Now chatting with the cast, they said that you were the perfect captain to helm this ship. Yeah. As a debut director, what was the experience like working with this amazing cast? It was a great cast. I felt really lucky to get them uh, involved. They really helped develop their characters because they're true professionals. And, uh, and I think we got a, a lot more out of each scene because of their, you know, active, uh, as a product of their active participation and everything we did on the script. We worked on it a lot before we started shooting and spent a lot of, lot of time together, a lot of weeks together, really refining uh, the script. But they, they were all terrific. What first uh, attracted you to the project? What was it that stuck out about that story? I had heard the story and I was just fascinated with it, that it hadn't been told. Um, fascinated also with World War II and that period in history. Uh, I like these types of films tonally and um, it's a pretty amazing story and also deals a lot with the aftermath of World War II uh, and the notion of how we define art. Speaking of that, that was actually my next question because I think it poses a very interesting question in this movie, which I'll ask you, how do you define art? I would say that if a person was if someone claims I've made a piece of art, I will say, good, great. I mean, I, I don't think that anybody gets to be the judge of what defines art. Great art, really good art, whether it's music or film or paintings or drawing, whatever, dance, whatever it happens to be, can undo you in a way that, that gets you out of your head. So we, 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 we spend a lot of time sort of analysing the world around us and, and, having, and having theories about what's going on and, 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 and we're often fighting against our own emotions and yet those emotions are, are really sort of truly who we are. And I think when great art comes along, it, 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 just, it just knocks down all those barriers and we, and we tend to go, oh my gosh, I've been exposed here. Every type of art has some borrowed or, if you want, copied element to it. Every, you know, like everything in life, really, right? It's, it starts with something. There's some framework for, of reference for something that uh, develops originality. So 
One of the central themes of this film is what makes one piece of art more valuable than another and how do you define it? Why is one more expensive than another? Maybe the process is very similar, but a lot of it has to do with uh, the power myth and people believing what they want to believe and placing value on something. And once that sort of catches fire, then it's automatically valuable. My final question is, we are a movie theater. Why should people experience The Last Vermeer on the big screen? It's funny because people often talk about, you know, when, it, when a film is really big and has lots of big special effects and it's a sort of an enormous kind of action film, it should be on a big screen. Sure, sure. fine, absolutely. But to me, when you have stuff that's very intimate, when you have things that are very subtle and very intimate, to have them enormous on a big screen is so evocative and so moving. So the performances of Vicky and Clace, they're sort of, they're delicate sort of romance that, 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 that sort of develops through the film. Uh, and particularly because the two of them are so beautiful as well. <laughs> like, why not see them both on a big screen? So, yeah, that's, that would be my recommendation. It's an experience, you know, it's like going on a roller coaster, you know, you would never go on a roller coaster and make your dog a food, like, or you would never go on a roller coaster and just only be half there because you would fall off. But then that's fun. That's the whole point about a roller coaster is that you're in it and you're like going up and down and wow, where am I? And the colors and the things and the sound and the, and to me, that's what cinema is. Folks, I'm excited for you to see this amazing story on the big screen. So make sure to get your tickets at cinemark.com. Why do you care so much about this man? He's not the man, really. It's the fact that he's innocent.